Ooh, hey. I gotta light my celebration cigarette on this one, fellas. Mr. Gatekeeper here. Yeah, about three o'clock, this lovely Monday morning. I have a very neat, very neat and unique amplifier here that I was uh, very happy to be uh, able to work on. I have absolutely no idea who made this amplifier. As you see, it's called a B4500. I've noticed there is a B3000 as well out there. Um, I have absolutely no idea. I'm, I'm guessing it is designed to handle about a hundred watts of, uh, input. Kind of going along with a lot of other ham amps out there. I mean, this has every remnant of being a straight 10 meter, 12 meter broadband possibly one to 30 megahertz amp it is uh, AB biased and it is uh, a regulated AB I don't see any uh, remnants of tracking but it is uh, regulated AB which is uh, very impressive This is uh, four 454s. Uh, one really unique thing about this is each of the two transistors is powered by a standalone power supply. Meaning here's a power supply for the left two transistors. Here's the power supply for the right two transistors. Let me bend the phone. There's the... Uh, regulation circuit uh, it's uh, utilized with about six pass transistors I don't know if it's two drivers or one driver but there you go and take a look at the way they are splitting and combining uh, I said to say this is one of the first times I've seen splitting and combining done this way using coax uh, both parts of the coax well my friend we got her all shaped up for you um, first off I don't know if it was done in while it was being shipped or what but if you notice the front here is not completely stable you know it's a little flimsy and I'm talking about every single one of these LEDs were broke. They had broke off. Every single one of them. So what I went ahead and did is just utilized uh, all blue LEDs. And what I did is I went ahead and extended and put wire, extra wire on each LED to give it room you know while it's flexing as you can see so that won't happen again so I guess they didn't really think about that when they built it or maybe they have another version where they've uh, as well done that but you know it was like just in the, it, it basically just was using the, the legs of the LEDs and it was just enough this thing has one two three four five six seven seven general purpose transistors <laughs> god the money boy all right buddy well your main problem to start off with <clears throat> was your keying circuit over in this section right here what I had to go ahead and do is replace the key-in transistor. I had to replace a, a resistor that was blown. An electrolytic cap. 
And what I went ahead and did is replace the diode as well, the uh, glass diode. And uh, after I done that, it was uh, all all good to go in that in that perspective. Um, the very first time I turned it on, it was uh, it was keying itself and uh, pretty much going into uh, thermal runaway. And I figured that out pretty quick when I felt these front heat sinks is for the regulating circuit getting quite warm on me just having it on so i quickly turned it off and, and uh, it pretty much told me what was wrong after seeing that all right man well once we got the uh keying up on it and checking everything i could just tell there was some uh major problems going on because for one thing it just wasn't doing the power it was supposed to be doing i was getting about mm, maybe 50 bird maybe two 250 peak and uh let me walk over here and oh let's see here we got to bring this with me over here oh yeah make some room right here y'all bear with me we about to be moving to my to my shop y'all finally it's been a long damn time coming i'll tell you that I about can't fit in this now. <laughs> All right. All right, here is most of the components that came out of it. There's a, there's a few more I just threw away because they were so destroyed. Um, Where are they? Right here. Uh, looks like the other one is over there somewhere. But anyway, right here. Take a look at that. That thing is blown to hell and back. Now these were the silver dip micas that was on the output. Basically your output tune. Okay. And as you see, the size of it, I just uh, didn't agree with that at all. So what I went ahead and done is, uh, this is a 24 Pika Farad. Go ahead and got you two DM19s and uh, soldered them in for you. Uh, about twi three times the size of what they had in there, so that right there should last you a good, good little while. Good little while. The one I just showed you came from the right side here, and I noticed that the right side was getting a lot warmer than the left uh, during initial testing. But I um, went ahead and got you some good DM19s right there. All right. Oh, after I done that, that 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 did help a little, but it just was not giving me the results that I was needing. So, <laughs> now this right here was uh, fairly unique. These caps right here. All right, these were on the output transformers. Let's see if I can zoom in here. 920 picofarad okay these were on the output transformers where you see this metal metal clads at all right now i went and checked the first one and it was sitting at about 118 picofarad and i was like whoa so i took the uh, second one out and checked it and it was about at 130 picofarad so basically what had happened, and I could tell just by the, you could tell by a silver dip mic if, if it's been very hot, just by the the, the uh, silver dip around it, the coating. And basically what happened, man, is that capacitor is one of the capacitors that handles the most heat. That's why you see us using metal clads. They are the absolute best capacitor to use. They can get super hot and keep its value. All right. I know I'm talking a little much here. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this. You know, I know i got a big mouth. They should call me motor mouth gatekeeper. But um, basically they had just got so hot, they equally dropped the value over time. I don't know how long this box has been used. This box could have been used for over 20 years. I don't know. But it had just been, you know, just gotten so hot that it just equally, they both equally lost their value equally. And uh, I had to say, that's the first time I've seen that. A lot of times it'll just be one or, 
you know, one here, one there, whatever. Anyway, next, which is a, we're about done here. We have the capac uh, capacitors on the input transformers where you see these yellow ones at now. This is what was on there. You had this bigger one, and then you had this smaller one. Well, I noticed that off the rip and knew that I was going to be changing that because that just don't sit right with me. These are uh, supposed to be 1100 picofarad, okay? I don't know why such the odd number, but uh, they both checked out fine. They were pretty far away from each other. One was like at 1,080. The other was at like 1,140. So what I went ahead and done is just utilized two uh, matched 1,000s. So that is a 1,000 picofarad at 1,000 volts, okay? All righty. Um... I went ahead and cleaned her up for you as well. I, I, I love this amplifier, man. This is a beautiful amp. And uh, I went ahead and cleaned it up, man. And uh, put the metals on there for you, of course, man. So, I mean, them things right there, man. This thing should give many, many more years of service, man. Of usage, no doubt about it. But, you know, th this amp had just seemed to got a little bit of moisture in it. And a lot of the flux had turned like white and just nasty looking. Uh, there was part, parts of the board that were green. I kind of took some acetone to that. So we just cleaned it up pretty good for you, man. And uh, and dusted it out and, you know, just did our thing there, man. And took some care to it, man. It's a real impressive amp. Oh, there was uh, one more thing around here at this circuit that I had to fix. And that should be it. This resistor, you see this blue resistor, the resistor there was completely fried for some reason. And basically, this is a neat little circuit here. Basically, what it does is when you turn the amp on and it's receiving, this LED lights up. The second that you key, this LED unlights and these two light, okay? The neat thing about it, though, is once you start talking, this one starts eliminating. So that's a really neat circuit. I really did like that, man. I was thinking about even putting some blue LEDs behind here when you key and this turn blue, but I got so much blue on here now, man. I just got a lot of work to do, too, man. So, hell, just went ahead and do it. So, all right, man. Uh, like I said, man, if there's anybody watching this that has that knows this amplifier, that has worked on this amplifier before, that has any kind of information, please contact me on my comments or uh, my email. Uh, T h r e e m a n p is in purple r o. That's three man pro, three man pro at gmail dot com. And uh, if you don't mind, just give me some information about like who built it, stuff like that. Uh, if you know what they say the wattage handling is i know it's regulated the uh i don't think the regulation circuits are very stable uh when you key the voltage does increase a little so it's not exactly stable but it's not increasing bad we're talking about maybe a volt but there at the same time i don't know maybe they uh designed it that way i have no idea i really do have no idea oh one last thing the uh, low was not doing hardly anything at all. I have never seen anything like this. But for the low, all it did is have a wire going through these two beads. And I have never seen... Now, now it, 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 it was giving a little less. Now, that was very unique. It was giving a little less just by sending the wire through these two beads. I don't know. I guess the uh, RF was kind of being, a little bit of the RF was being soaked up in those beads. But I went ahead and just uh, utilized with a resistor here. Big honking 5 watt resistor. Got a uh, ceramic there too, just to filter out any DC uh, remnants of DC there. So, alright, let's go ahead and, I uh, only got about four more minutes left on this recording. Let's go ahead and show you what we're going to be doing here. Oh, te 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 te
Beautiful. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start off low. We'll show the peak first. It's about a 59 watt dead key. That's about a watt going into it. All right, about 372 watts. We utilize a 1,000 watt slug. Let's see if that'll show. Okay. Right there, about 100 bird. Input tune. Uh. Ah, uh, y'all don't laugh at me. Get out of the way, girl. Damn it. Oh, y'all don't laugh at me here. Y'all, I keep it real. That is my 10-watt slug, and guess what? Uh, a certain somebody, I ain't gonna name his name, dropped my slug, and uh, that came off of it. So, yeah. I am going to have to take time to glue that back on, but those are just glued on. As you see, that's how they tune the slugs. And as you can see, it says TNA on it, and that's what it is, TNA. Okay. That's the end. Yeah, let's turn back. So, sorry about that, y'all. I know that kind of looks tacky. So, here's the input. Yo, ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-